Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 7 for July the 19th, uh, 2020. We're still in Unit 2 entitled Wisdom in the Gospels. And our topic for today, taken from uh, the Adult Quarterly, is Wisdom That Astounds and Offends. Our devotion reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, Chapter 7, uh, verses 14 through 23. Our background scripture is taken from Mark, Chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, and then Mark, Chapter 7, verses 1 through 23. And we'll be studying today uh, for our lesson from the Gospel of Mark, Chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. Our key verse reads, when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many uh, who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things? they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon and aren't his sisters here with us and they took offense at him it's taken from Mark chapter 6 uh, verses 2 and 3 from the NIV translation our lesson aims today number one is to identify the reason or reasons why the people in Nazareth uh, could not accept the wisdom with which Jesus spoke secondly to repent of occasions when Jesus words resulted in your taking offense rather than in accepting the wisdom inherent uh, in those words and then thirdly to commit to accepting the words of Jesus even when his words are challenging and stretching we have three outlines today that are part of our lesson the first outline is ent entitled they were amazed second outline is entitled wisdom from where and the third outline is entitled a prophet without honor and so we are thankful and uh, prayerful today that God have allowed us to uh, continue to be in the land of the living we thank God that he have blessed us to be able to continue to uh, present our uh, Sunday school lesson to you and we're certainly um, admonishing all to be prayerful in this time during this pandemic and we're seeing a lot of things take place and but it's important that we continue to buy up every opportunity that we can uh, to continue to edify ourselves in the Word of God because uh, we're going to need it in the days to come uh, and so it's important to remember that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God and so we want to get into uh, our lesson today we have quite a bit of ground to cover uh, in these six verses but we want to just make a couple of points about um, the Gospel of Mark and we should remember um, that Luke and, and Mark they were not uh, apostles as were Matthew and John and so Mark is the uh, briefest of the uh, four Gospels and so it is a narrative of dynamic movement and action so we see the word straightway or immediately depending on your translation being used uh, more than 40 times uh, particularly in the King James Version so Mark presents uh, Jesus acting uh, rather than speaking so it is uh, directed not to the Jews as is Matthew but uh, to the Roman world giving a portrait of Jesus uh, as the powerful uh, son of God and so it should be understood out, out of all the uh, writings here uh, that the Spirit of God inspired each uh, writer to um, to write independently and so we don't want to um, uh, pit them against one another if you will but but it was how the Spirit of God 
chose to use these gospel writers that they pinned uh, the narrative in the way that uh, God wanted them to write based on their understanding and so we appreciate uh, the gospel of Mark and we want to uh, make mention of the fact that uh, this narrative as we uh, seek to recall uh, some of the activity of Jesus Galilean ministry as we pointed out in this key verse here that that there were many things that were being said uh, we find some of the hearers and some of the onlookers of the miracles that Jesus perform uh, we find some of them amazed and then we find some people that uh, took offense at his gospel his message uh, and who he was and what he came to bring and so we will always have that uh, uh, problem if you will in our culture today um, all of us as ministers we should understand that we are going to face rejection uh, not because of something that we may have particularly said or done but because Jesus did and so if they did it to him then uh, we are going to have to experience these things so we want to uh, look at a few things uh, from this biblical context and we're going to uh, uh, unpack some things today that uh, can help us to understand why is it that uh, we have uh, so much rejection uh, we're going to show you biblically and share with you why it is that Jesus was encountering uh, uh, so much rejection you would think uh, if, if we were able to see Christ in action we were able to see him healing people raising the dead and uh, feeding the hungry uh, healing the sick in addition to preaching um, uh, why would we take offense at those things? Those seem to be things that uh, we would need in any culture. We need healing today. Uh, we need salvation today. Uh, uh, and so we, we should understand that everything that Christ uh, presented in his day during his ministry was ordained by the Father. And so when men chose to reject Christ and the things that he was doing to cause them or to spur belief it should be understood that they were also rejecting the father and so who who sent him and so that was a a, a, a telling sign if you will that uh, the men not only uh, did not only want it want Christ they didn't want uh, the father who sent Christ into the world and so uh, but in this biblical context Nazareth uh, was a village situated inside a bowl atop uh, the Nazareth Ridge north of the Jezreel Valley uh, Nazareth was a relatively isolated village in the time of Jesus with a population of less than 200 so Jesus spent uh, his boyhood years in Nazareth before beginning his ministry when he was about 30 years old. So after moving his home to Capernaum, Jesus returned to teach in the synagogue of Nazareth twice, uh, twice more, but was rejected both times. And so on one occasion, the townspeople were so outraged uh, at Jesus that they tried to throw him off a cliff to his death. You can see that in Luke chapter 4 verse 29. So uh, be prepared uh, as we get into this lesson because we're still seeing rejection uh, uh, in our culture today. We're still seeing people who are amazed that Christ is offering them salvation and that they're being healed and that they're being uh, delivered and that they're being set free but we also find that uh, rejection and offense uh, is also something that uh, we as uh, ministers of God we will experience that and we should 
prepare to defend ourselves uh, and our stance, if you will, uh, for those uh, detractors. But Jesus' ministry um, involved essentially three areas. Uh, he did miracles, uh, he taught, and he uh, also presented parables. He taught in parables. Uh, 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 that men might believe and one of the reasons why that he his strategy was to teach in parables because uh, some of his biblical teaching uh, uh, could not be absorbed by the hearers in a way that they would be able to benefit spiritually from it and so uh, Jesus broke things down in a way where the hearers uh, could understand the message that he was attempting to uh, preach to them but so in the middle of a very mixed set of responses to Jesus ministry uh, Jesus tells a parable of seed falling on different kinds of soil you can see that in Mark chapter 4 verses 1 through 9 but the varying results uh, represent different responses of faith and unbelief to God's good news. Uh, you can see that in Mark chapter 4 verses 10 through 20. So Jesus' experience at home uh, leads us to today's text. And so we want to keep in mind that uh, Jesus had been going throughout the region of Galilee uh, doing various things uh, prior to uh, returning home and so we want to get into this first outline they were amazed this is taken from Mark chapter 6 verses 1 and 2a and I want to read this from the NIV translation so Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples when the Sabbath came he began to teach in the synagogue and many uh, who heard him were amazed. This was a, a custom, a tradition or a practice that uh, Jesus would always begin, uh, or his custom was to teach in the synagogues uh, and to reach out to the religious folks uh, who, uh, who would uh, uh, congregate in these places and so it's very important that uh, and that's relevant for us today uh, we, we uh, are preaching and teaching in the house of the Lord we are reaching out to people who have come to hear and so uh, but after a series of miraculous healings in the region of Gerasenes as recorded in Matthew chapter 5 uh, Jesus returned to the other side of the of of the Sea of Galilee to visit his hometown. So uh, uh, it, it's understandable here that uh, uh, Jesus was going there to work. Uh, he was going to his hometown to do ministry work. Uh, but uh, uh, although Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Nazareth was Joseph's hometown so it it made sense for Jesus to want to share with the people he grew up with uh, he had not been warmly received previously you can see that in uh, Luke chapter 4 verses 16 through 30 but perhaps this time would be different so finally Jesus had a chance to share with his hometown community so it was the Sabbath and everyone was assembled uh, in the local synagogue and so we may infer that the Sabbath was the only time of the week for formers, formal religious instruction. So they did not have a midweek Bible study but on that day they had a guest speaker Joseph's boy Jesus. So uh, Mark does not indicate the expectations of those assembled however we can judge from their later comments that they did not expect much 
So perhaps Jesus would share some basic comments using his experience uh, in the carpentry trade as a frame of reference. Uh, but as Jesus began to teach, uh, uh, they, they were astonished. Uh, and as we read in the key verse, uh, all of these different uh, particular uh, responses here, uh, for the most part, uh, they were looking at this man, looking at Christ, looking at this young man, um, and some of them received uh, the things that Jesus was saying, although they questioned where or what was the origin uh, of this thing, uh, where his teachings came from, and how he obtained this wisdom. Uh, those are uh, understandable responses. But we also see people looking and listening to Jesus from a natural perspective. And sometimes we are not able to, uh, we have uh, uh, natural ears, but we don't have spiritual ears. We have uh, 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 been able to look at individuals and we see them and, and, and what they may have on and, and, and how they are presenting themselves. But, but we should be listening for the spirit that is using uh, these individuals. And so if you look at uh, Matthew, I was thinking about this from uh, Matthew chapter 16. Uh, verses 13 through 17 you look you can look at it at your leisure but uh, Jesus in his dialogue with Peter he asked a question who do men say that I am and you all are familiar with that passage and so uh, uh, Jesus began to hear that there were there were other uh, 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 interpretations of who he was and and so this is why many times uh, we fail to accept the things that uh, are being said to us is because we are looking at them from a uh, carnal mindset. Uh, and we're trying to, even as uh, 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 in Matthew's gospel, that these individuals were trying to, uh, 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 you know, uh, tag Jesus to some natural individuals or to some things that they understood naturally and so they were missing uh, some key components here uh, that Jesus was trying to uh, to share with them and so uh, when we have these kinds of mindsets uh, we should understand that that unbelief is a serious offense it's a serious sin to possess and so uh, when we have these things, uh, even as the key verse uh, uh, shares with us, that some of them took offense at him. Some of them uh, were so entrenched uh, uh, in unbelief, right? Unbelief in his person and work uh, was expressed here. So the people saw Jesus as Joseph's actual son, as a carpenter, as a mere sinful man with brothers and sisters and so they were missing some things uh, because they were carnal minded but you know as I was reading this and studying this and thinking about this and we're going to give you some scripture to to qualify the things that we're going to share with you but it's un it should be understood that the Word of God is revealed truth uh, uh, what I'm saying to you today is that it's difficult. It is impossible for us to uh, uh, pick it up and grab uh, uh, everything that God intends us to have out of his word without including God. And so uh, uh, it should be understood that, that these individuals had not had a revelation of who uh, Jesus was but if you look at uh, and, and, and you can look at this at your leisure I want you to look at John chapter 6 uh, verses 41 through 59 this is Jesus dialogue with the Jews uh, and also uh, John chapter 6 uh, verses 60 through 70 is Jesus discussion with his disciples and uh, and also I want you to look at Philippians chapter 1 
uh, verses 29 and 30. But uh, back over in uh, the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John, uh, when Jesus was talking to the Jews uh, and explaining things to them, they still had a natural perspective of things. They had not had a revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, they had or they took offense uh, uh, at the gospel message. And so they were not able to, to, to draw anything uh, from the message. And so uh, they were offended uh, uh, by the message. And so Jesus was telling these Jews that he was the bread of life that, that had come down uh, from heaven. But the Bible says that the Jews quarreled among themselves. You'll see that in verse 52 of the uh, uh, sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. And they wondered, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? And so they were struggling with this, uh, uh, with the sayings of Jesus, with the teachings of Jesus. And Jesus was talking to them about spiritual things, but they were thinking carnal minded. So when you look at uh, uh, verse 60 uh, from the sixth chapter of John, now we shift to the disciples also struggling uh, uh, with this message or with this type of teaching. And Jesus asked them in verse 61 of John chapter 6, Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, this teaching. And he said to them, does this offend you? So what then if you should see the Son of Man of sin uh, where he was before? So it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh uh, profits nothing. So the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But verse 64 says, but there were some of you uh, uh who do not believe, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. And so Jesus went on uh, uh, to talk to them about this uh, predicament. But, but what happened that uh, verse 66 says, From that time many of his own disciples went back and the Bible says they walk with him no more. And so this is uh, uh, what happens uh, uh, even today. And Jesus experienced this in his hometown of, of Nazareth. Going back home. Going back, uh, if, as we read earlier, uh, not a very big town. Not a huge population. But went back there to minister to his own hometown folk, his own home community, uh, uh, and there was some rejection. And so they thought that they could compare him or they were rationalizing with him uh, from a carnal mindset and not thinking about the spirit that was using him or the things that, that he was saying uh, that they might be able to uh, draw from him. And so it's very important that we understand uh, as people of God and as hearers, we need spiritual ears. We need to be able to discern who is speaking to us and and the, the infusion, if you will, uh, uh, of that wisdom, uh, where it is coming from, and then we can uh, move forward to apply the things uh, uh, that we are hearing. And so unbelief uh, is a terrible predicament uh, for any culture. And so these folks, uh, if we talk about uh, Matthew uh, chapter 16 again, when Jesus was uh, uh, talking to Peter and asking him what were the people saying about him, who uh, uh, who did they think he was? And, and we had a mixed response. But 
Jesus asked Peter, but who do you say uh, that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus told him that flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my father who is in heaven. So we need a revelation of, 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 uh, of who God is and who his son is. And so none of us can come to God as, as, except the father uh, draws us. I want us to understand this. But uh, the question is asked here. When someone you know has displayed surprising insights and knowledge. What were yours and others reaction? And sometimes uh, uh, if, if we are listening to someone that we don't particularly want to hear from. Then we sort of discount them. But if it's some popular individual, we will give them uh, the recognition. And sometimes we have to be careful with that uh, uh, because not all of us uh, will have our names blinking in lights. And so not all of us will be as popular as the next. But what is the content of that message? And, and, and are we able to uh, attribute a lifestyle to, the, to those messengers? that we are able to discern who they are from, uh, who sent them, uh, based on not just what they say, but what they do. And so uh, we, we, we have to keep these things. And so you know if these individuals were uh, thinking that Jesus was a carpenter, that he was just a natural man, that we know his brothers and sisters and his mother is here, they are already discounting him. They're already looking down that he is not an individual uh, uh, that they want to listen to. So he's not, uh, uh, he's not uh, arrayed like the Pharisees. or He doesn't look like anybody of any importance. So we're going to discount him. But he was the son of God. He was a messenger sent by God. He brought salvation. And so if, if they had been following him... Uh, uh, in previous uh, uh, ministry accounts, they should have been able to see that he was doing things, uh, uh, performing miracles that were not of this world. He was doing things. He was feeding people all throughout the Gospel of Mark. We see Jesus in action. And so that was not even enough for them to, uh, uh, to acknowledge the fact that that they needed to hear from him, that they needed to hear the full scope of what he came to bring, which was salvation for each and every man that did not know him. So we want to keep that in mind. Our second outline is entitled, Wisdom from Where? This is taken from Mark chapter 6, verse 2b and verse 3. I want to read this again from the uh, NIV translation. Where did this man get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. So even at the things that they were hearing and that they were seeing him do, they still were not able to accept who he was and they were still taking offense at him uh, 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 and sometimes you know I would I would push to say that perhaps some of these individuals that took offense at him needed healing some of them that took offense at him probably had a family member that needed healing uh, uh, perhaps some of them that were uh, taking offense of, at him uh, 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 needed to be saved. Uh, we could go on and on and on. But Jesus was there to perform miracles and did do these things and did speak in a way that they recognized that, 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 that it was something that they had not heard before, but yet they took offense at him. So the people of Nazareth were in an uproar. In their minds, there was no way that Jesus could be speaking with such authority. He was speaking on a level that they had never heard before. Jesus' words uh, were not the monotonous repetition of the law, 
They were soul stirring and life changing. That wasn't enough. Jesus was performing miracles since the gospel writers made no mention of him uh, after the 12 uh, year old Jesus temple visit. We assume that Joseph was dead at the time of Jesus teaching on this Sabbath. Otherwise, as one of the men of the community, Joseph would have been present uh, to hear his stepson. But, you know, these people were uh, mocking, uh, they were ridiculing, uh, they were in an uproar about who Jesus was. But I was thinking about the question, why are people offended? Why are we offended? Uh, and if you have your Bible, I want you to turn very quickly with me to John chapter 3. And this will help us to understand uh, why there are some who will not accept the things that uh, God is giving them uh, through the gospel. And so John chapter 3, if you go down to verse 20. The Bible says, and uh, uh, everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But the one who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. This is Jesus talking here, right? This is the reason why. Uh, 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 this is the underlying reason why men sometime they don't want to come to the gospel. They don't want to be exposed. They don't want their uh, deeds to be exposed. So unbelief is not only the basis of the condemnation here in John chapter 3, but it constitutes the climax of rebellion by resisting even God's gracious offer of salvation in Christ. So Christ comes into the world that is already condemned because of its rejection of God's self-revelation. You should look at Romans chapter 1 verses 18 through 32, but men love darkness rather than the light. Jesus gives the reason for the world's rejection of him. He is the light who exposes whether a person is righteous or not. He knows. And so, uh, uh, you know, I believe this about the word of God. We don't have to browbeat people uh, about who they are, uh, what they need to change. If we just preach the gospel, people know where they are. And they know who they are. But if we would just let the gospel identify the situation and the person and the motive. It is fully capable. Hebrews chapter 4 will help you to understand that the gospel is extremely effective. But it must be preached. And so this opposition that they are taking or this offense that they have with Christ is because of the truth. And so Jesus doesn't have to uh, 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 say all of these negative things to sort of browbeat them. He just needs to present the message as it is. To literally cut a straight line and then allow people to make a decision whether they want to accept or not. And this is the thing that, that we need to understand. God has blessed us. Uh, with the capacity to make decisions in life. And so we have to understand that if we reject uh, the knowledge of God, if we reject the message of God, there is nothing else. Uh, there is no other Savior to come. There is no more blood to be shed. There is no cross. Uh, all of these things have already uh, been accomplished. And so uh, uh, if you reject the, the salvation uh, that 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 God has sent to us uh, through Jesus Christ. There is no other name given under heaven by which 
we can be saved. So we need to understand the impact of uh, the decisions uh, that we make. But if you look back over in John chapter 3, I want to touch on verse 18 before we move on. Uh, the by Jesus is still talking and the Bible says uh, he who believes in him is not condemned but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God and so this is it there is no other name this is the only one that we have been given to be saved and so this is the condemnation unbelief this is the condemnation that men have chosen darkness over light this was your decision this is my decision whatever we are saying about uh, the message of Jesus Christ is a decision that we have uh, made and so when we turn a deaf ear to the message to the word of God think about these people in this small town of Nazareth Jesus could have went somewhere else and subsequently he had to move on because he was being rejected where he was and sometimes we have to understand the preciousness of the timing of the word of God coming to us God does not have to continue to strive with us always he will not do that and so it is a precious opportunity even now that you are hearing the word of God uh, that you are able to hear it how many more opportunities that we are going to have to hear it we don't know and so uh, how many more opportunities uh, 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 does God have to present to us before he acts and so all of us, uh, uh, if you're looking at a saved person today, and I know you might say, well, Jesus was performing miracles in his day. Well, you are a miracle. You are a miracle that he performed right in front of your family members. He delivered you. He saved you. He picked you up. He turned you around. He stopped you from destroying yourself and saved you and strategically planted you right where people could see you so you could testify that it was him and so uh, uh, they don't understand that God put a miracle right before their very eyes it was a miracle that you and I got up this morning we take these things too lightly God is performing miracles for us every day you are clothed in your right mind you have the actions of your limb you have a reasonable portion of health and strength and the saints from yesteryear would say and the blood is still running warm in your veins these are miracles God is performing them right in front of our eyes and so how dare we take offense in the face of the miracle that we have received these people in Nazareth uh, God set it up that Jesus would go back home and present a message. They saw this man doing all manner of things, but they took offense at him. And this is something that we need to be careful with today. Uh, uh, and I hope that we are understanding the preciousness of the word of God. And Jesus was only on earth for a limited time. Hear me, hear me on this. He was only on earth for a limited time and then he departed. And so now we have a limited time in this dispensation uh, to hear the word of God. But we don't know how many more opportunities we are going to have. And so it was a precious thing that God sent his word to Nazareth, that he sent the Savior to uh, 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 to Nazareth to to present the message and to everything that God could do uh, uh, in terms of the miracles and the teachings and the parables and, and the wisdom, everything that the people needed uh, uh, to hear and be saved, God presented to them and they rejected it. So we need to be careful about those things. So uh, uh, the question is asked here, what are some traditions held by people today that Jesus teachings may strongly challenge and I, I just think and believe that our messaging should be according to the scriptures and so uh, Jesus was not popular and was not seeking 
to be popular. He was seeking to tell the truth. He was seeking to do the things that his father commanded him to do. He was seeking to expose to men the salvation. And so in our traditional uh, 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 arena today, we need to make sure that we are following the teachings of Jesus Christ, that we are presenting the message. People are dying without Christ. People are dying without being saved. That should impact every minister and the message that we are preaching to people to make sure we expose the full scope of salvation to bear uh, uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And if we are not doing that, we are missing something. If we are not giving the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ, we are missing something today. If we have shackles on the truth, uh, we are missing something today. If we are watering down the word of God, we are missing something today. So we don't want to get caught up in these things that appear to be uh, popular and, 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 and sometimes they will uh, tickle the ears of the hearer, but they have no substance of what must men do to be saved. That is the uh, core of who Jesus is and what he came to present. So our final outline is entitled, A Prophet Without Honor. This is taken from Mark chapter uh, 6 verses 4 through 6 and again from the NIV uh, translation. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. He could not do any miracles. Hear this from verse 5. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Verse 6. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. A prophet is not without honor except in his own town. He went back home, you know, he went back to his hometown to share. He went back home to his hometown to be a blessing. And he was rejected. And the Bible is clear. He could not work. Isn't that a sad commentary? The Savior could not work in the, in the environment of unbelief. He couldn't work around the opposition or in the opposition that 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 men were uh, uh, exhibiting to him they were not even receptive uh, uh, to the message he could not do any more miracles so I would argue that he wanted to do more than what he did uh, he wanted to reach more lives he and this is where the gospel uh, 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 our proclamation has to be inclusive. We ought to try to reach as many people as we can. We realize that that there are going to be some who are going to reject Christ, who don't want to be saved. But but it is clear we must present it to them. We shouldn't deprive them of that message. And so I believe Jesus knew he was going to be rejected when he went back home. I don't believe it was a surprise to him that there would only be a few people, but the Bible is clear. He went anyway. He went anyway, and he was able to lay hands uh, on a few sick people, and the Bible says he healed them. He made them well. So, but he was amazed at the others and their lack of faith. So what happened, Jesus subsequently left. That's what I was getting at earlier. He went uh, around teaching from village to village. So he had to leave Nazareth. Let me say this to you. When you reject the knowledge of God, when you reject the word of God, perhaps you are listening to me today and you've heard enough. And you've decided that you don't want to hear any more of what I have to say. Guess what? There is somebody that does. There is somebody that wants to hear. There is somebody on the edge of their seat. There is somebody at the end of their rope. There is somebody who have 
uh, their back is against the wall. There is somebody who is desperately sick and needs someone to offer a comforting word. All I'm sharing with you today is that when you reject it, that's not the end of God's working in uh, uh, in ministry or in the lives or in the community just because you get up and walk out of the sanctuary because you don't want to hear it doesn't mean that there's somebody who is still sitting there who wants to hear it so we ought to be mindful today that just because you don't want it somebody else might want it and so that's the concept here that what Jesus did and he couldn't do any more miracles in Nazareth that he wanted to do it's clear that he left you know and he went somewhere else and he provided miracles perhaps for for some folks who were more appreciative of what he had to offer and so we're living in perilous time that that we don't have uh, uh, the time to be rejecting uh, Christ he is the only one that can save he is the only one that can heal and so he gave his own disciples power over all unclean spirits so so it's uh, important to understand that since they didn't believe and they didn't accept and they ridiculed and they were in an uproar Jesus packed up and went someplace else and so we should always remember if we don't want to serve the Lord there's somebody that does if you don't want to give your life to Christ there's somebody that does there's always somebody who understands that they are in a critical place in their life that they have had time and time to reject this message but now it's time to give their lives to Christ so I hope trust and pray that we are able to understand this I want you to look at Matthew chapter 10 verses 34 uh, through 39 and also Luke chapter 49 Luke chapter 12 verses 49 through 53 and I just want to encourage those of you that 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 are saved today but you are in a house where there's other unsaved folk I want to encourage you today to stand your ground. I know it's difficult. Perhaps you're the only one saved on your job. Uh, I want to encourage you today that you're going to face opposition, not because of something particularly that you have done wrong, but if they did this to Jesus, you should understand that they're going to do it to you. And so you may be harassed. You may be ridiculed. You may be mocked. All of these things, you, you, a lot of things may happen to you uh, 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 as a form of rejection, not just for what you say, but who you are. But just remember they did it to Jesus. Just remember these scriptures that Jesus said it, that a prophet is not without honor, except in his own town among his relatives. Jesus' own family members didn't want to hear what he had to say. His own disciples, the Bible says some of them didn't want to walk with him anymore. But you hold up the bloodstained banner of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so we are encouraging you today that it's not an accident that you are facing opposition where you are it has been prescribed for you to endure these things so stand your ground as Jesus did and if God provided for you to uh, share your faith uh, somewhere and it's it's not receptive uh, to others and they don't want to accept it then God will provide another opportunity for you to share your faith so that's what it's all about it's all about opportunity uh, God is providing opportunities for us today and what we do with that opportunity is telling and so we want to be able to be a, an encouragement and be a blessing I really enjoyed this lesson from that perspective that uh, sometimes we have to move on uh, and that's what Jesus did uh, 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 he couldn't do what he came to do but he did what he could do and the Bible says that he moved on to another place let me pray for us now father God we thank you for this word today we thank you for just being able to recount the steps of Jesus 
We've been able to look at his life in a different light. We've been able to see some things that he went through and, and we are embracing for some difficult days. But the gospel is right. There are men and women and children who need to be saved today. And we thank you for giving us an opportunity to share our faith and to share your word with all of these and your people that are here us today. We pray and we know that there are many who are facing a difficulty as they stand their ground. And we want you to strengthen them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Give them a mind to run on and see what the end is going to be. And we just thank you for this lesson today. We're praying for our leadership today. We're praying for our country today. We're praying for those who have been affected by this virus. We're praying for the healing of those on the front line. We realize that we're being stretched in every direction. But I heard you say, Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. We thank you, Father, and we trust you, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. So until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.